Hey everybody, it's Eduardo. Back here with your draft stream call sheet review and weekend preview. It's kind of lackluster this week, so we're just going to get through it. Oh look, once again, the bird is the word. Jaybird in the early lead for the clean money sweep. He's got first, he's got second, and now he's angling for the low ball to, for all three money positions. How'd he do it? Well, we'll take a look at that in a second. Right behind him, just less than four points behind. Gamble 24x7, G24, the homie, also in fourth spot. And looky here. What's rapidly becoming a Thursday night tradition is Brown Baby, our mascot, the Draft Mom, currently holding down fifth over Henner YYZ. Where am I, you may ask? I am nowhere to be found because I was running late and just threw together my call sheets based on feel of all things. Not recommended. I guess we can turn this into a bit of an experiment to see how just random luck plays as far as this game's involved. I really just went by vague memories of of cobbling together the, the, the talent pool and the salary. So I'm gonna I'm I'm not in contention for anything this week. So good luck to everyone out there, and including my mom, where this could be the week where she finally beats me. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, so let's take a look at the perfect call sheet first. Oh, okay. So we got Clifford. Now this is a this is a down week. First of all, I don't know if there's a ton of stuff here from a content standpoint to get that excited about. Apparently, the mar the market agrees with me. Uh, I mean, it is Thursday, so a lot of these scores will eventually be filled in. But I mean, Rotten Tomatoes is sleeping the switch. Google, no one's found these shows yet, but you know, in their defense, a lot of these shows aren't debuting till tomorrow. Dead Pixels has been out for a while, but tomorrow we've got a couple Sunday shows. So, so we look forward to these default scores going from black to not black to just normal. All right, to, from bold to old. All right, so so the perfect call sheet has Clifford the Big Red Dog, a nice little optimal stack right here of Clifford the Big Red Dog, and then Headliner's The Way Out, Headliner stack of Dead Pixels, Headliner stack of Tesla, Headliner stack of Watch List. Oh, Eve Houston, hello. I like her. From The Nick, also known as Bono's Daughter. So yeah, so these scores, I mean, granted, it is Thursday, it's early, but we are running well below average after, I think, a couple weeks of above average scores it can't stay at 78 forever can it once some of these scores fill out we should see these scores improve but i think just a hunch that overall we are going to be below average this weekend not a lot of stuff here to root for i am looking forward to seeing the 24th that seems interesting historical fiction houston race riot of or i mean actually i'm not sure it's a race riot but uh, the Houston Riot of 1917, scripted and directed by the esteemed Kevin Wilmot. So, what put Jay Bird in the lead two times? Well, he's got an 8 1 1 this week. That seems to be the favored construction of the perfect call sheet the last three weeks. Uh, it used to be a bit of an issue when we were first getting started, then we changed the rules a little bit. We saw more diversity in the perfect call sheet. And now, recently, it's, it just seems to be coalescing around an eight headliner, one co-star, one day player strategy. And to wit, he's all over it. He has headliner stack of Clifford. One headliner each from Find Me in Paris and Lucifer, which is pricey. Headliner stack from, no, three pack from Tesla and a three pack from Watch List. And actually, I think Watch List might be a bit of a dark horse here. I think it still has a couple of scores to come in, right? 
watch list. Yes, it still has Google user and Metacritic come in, but so far, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb is loving it. I think it could go even higher. Also, it's on, oh, that's right, virtual theaters, okay. Never mind, I had a theory, doesn't apply. Okay, so, so that's what he, that's the lead he jumped out to and trailing himself by about 17 points. Now he's got exposure to, to Clifford, or more exposure to Clifford, sorry. Two headliners and a day player, that's an interesting construction. A three pack of Tesla, headliner stack of watch list, and, he got, and he's got Lucifer. He's got the devil himself on, well actually not quite, the devil's partner, Lauren Germain, on the Jaybird's call sheet. So what is, so what does Gamble 24x7 have to do to catch up? He's not far behind from second, and 20 something points out of first. So Chemical Hearts is, is started slow, not a lot of ratings for it yet. I think only the one IMDb. No, actually not even IMDb. Where'd it go? Chemical Hearts. Oh, okay. I'll, I take that back. Critics are unimpressed. Google users like it a bit more. It's going to come down to that IMDb user rating to help boost his score. Dead Pixels is strong. Solid value for the price. Find Me in Paris, a nice alternative to Lucifer. If you're fading Lucifer, this is probably the way to go, but it's going to need some help. 15,500, still a good 10 to 13 points behind Lucifer's... What did Lucifer do? Behind Lucifer's... Oh, actually, it's not that far behind at all, 104.20. But also, Lucifer Season 5 has not showed up yet, so the 8.2 that we took as the series default score may change. It could go up, it could go lower, depending on how audiences like Lucifer on IMDb. So that is... Act and then... And then, ah, nice exposure to watch list, a nice five pack here. Like I just mentioned, I think it's got room to run. What else? Let's see. And then, yeah, fourth is pretty far back. The battle for the low. Shawty get low. Uh, Jaybird, 625.85. Damn close to the low ball perfect call sheet. About seven points off. Hoops has landed with a big dud. 53.75. That's got to be one of the lower scores we've ever had. But it's just getting started. That 14 did not help it at all. The 14 from Rotten Tomatoes critics. They hate this animated series. Exposure to Singletown. I think I chalked up a lot on Singletown. And The Pale Door. What is this one about? I don't think I know much about this one. Video on demand, okay, so it's out there on its own. A Western horror. Okay, thank you, no. Like Zachary Knighton, long live uh, happy endings, but yeah. Not my speed, not even 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, and then Gamble 24x7 is, wow, damn near 100 points off. What's holding him back? Well, he's got some Pale Door. He's got some Singletown, which sucks. And Random Acts of Violence is definitely underperforming, but he doesn't have any hoops. You gotta get some hoops, as my girl J-Lo would say on Saturday Night Live. Do you ever want to turn your ears the color of money? Get you some hoops. Sorry, couldn't resist. My girl Jen Risky would know what I'm talking about. Soon to be back here on the pod uh, in a couple weeks, I believe. Uh, let's see. And, okay, we'll just take a look at one of my terrible call sheets. I guess this is the one that's in contention. <coughs> it's quite bad. So while I do only have one head, one day player, 
Not enough headliners. Uh, one, two, three, four, five headliners, four co-stars, and a day player. I'm counting on some some help from Chemical Hearts. I something something about Prime. When people discover a title on Prime, I think they kind of like it. So that was rationale behind that. Hulu definitely stands for quality. So I like where the score is headed right here at Find Me in Paris. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your tail. If you look up the master score list here. And we sort by platform. You can see an average for Hulu. Here we go. Oh, not a huge sample size, but better than nothing. 93.38. Probably one of the higher averages we have after maybe Apple TV Plus. So Hulu stands for quality. Always go with Hulu. And Love in the Time of Corona. I think I was punting at this point. I, was, I went with a bit of a Stars and Scrubs construction because I because I wanted to get in Lucifer. I wanted to get my Hulu quality, and I think and I thought Chemical Hearts could be a sleeper. So at this point, I'm basically trying to find the best punts available. Punting my remaining, I don't know, what's that? 12,000 or so in salary. And I spent it on loving the time of Corona. Hopefully, people aren't too burnt out from being in quarantine. Hopefully, they'll be charmed by Leslie Odom Jr., a.k.a. Aaron Burr, sir. Uh, and hopefully, they'll find love in their hearts for loving the time of Corona. Because your boy needs the help. And Parfait D, I'm just going to call out our girl, Steph, who also kind of just threw a call sheet together, she admits. And she got a little some little bit of everything. This has to be a record. She has eight. Eight different titles on her call sheet. Wow. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, and actually, and while we're talking about a diversified call sheet, view it up for yourselves. We had 20 new titles here, and some way, somehow, all 20 got used. Even you, Ruthless Realtor. Even you. So, yeah. <laughs> That's, as uh, the old Vicki Lawrence used to say, wasn't that special? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the church lady. The Dana Carvey's church lady from SNL. Wasn't that special? Yes, she's got some Clifford. She's got dead pixels. Find me in Paris. Lucifer. Tesla. The 24th, and then mini stacks of the Val and watch list. She really diversified her risk. Will it be enough? Will she be able to beat out Brown Baby, the mascot? Only 33 points separate them. Let's take a look at the draft mom. Let's see what she's working with this week. The optimal stack exposure to Clifford. Well done. Ah, and there, here's where it comes crashing. This is the anchor around her otherwise fairly solid call sheet. Hoops, a very expensive misfire. 53.75. She has exposure to Lucifer, which is smart. And then Ruthless Realtor, she's just hoping against hope to get that Sunday night, this looks like this debut Sunday night, that Sunday night IMDB seven point or, or more score. Let's see what that looks like. If it gets like, say, a 7.3, what does that look like? Oh, man. That gives her another, what, 40 points, maybe? But still well behind the leaders. So she's got, so Draft Mode's going to need some help, but I like that she's in the top five. My goal for her this week is just to hang it onto the top five. I'm definitely out of it. Actually, everybody who's done the research should be beating me right now. So, good luck to everybody. Thanks for playing. I mean, I can't help it or control it, but sorry for the down week. I mean, they can't all be winners. So, 
let's skip through this week and get to next week, which hopefully should be more interesting and exciting as I construct the talent pool for next week. Thanks for playing, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll be back Saturday sometime after 12 p.m. Pacific time with the Saturday Estimates update and analysis. See you Saturday, everybody.